All right, everyone. So I want to talk to you guys some more about Afghanistan. I've already done some videos on Afghanistan and what we can expect for the future. But some of you guys have been writing saying, hey, Ted, you know, uh, talk about Afghanistan. Tell us some more about Afghanistan. So here I am to talk to you guys about one of the crappiest countries on the face of the earth. Uh, I don't really have much sympathy for uh, the culture of Afghanistan because... And some of you guys may have some difficulty accepting this. Um, in countries like Afghanistan, the idea of gratitude does not really exist. It doesn't really exist like you would find it in the United States or in a country like the United States. Uh, when you help people in Afghanistan or in countries like Pakistan or Iraq, um, a lot of it has to do with what can I get out of you? So if you help someone in, in Pakistan or Afghanistan, Iraq, the people that you're helping, they're going to look at you like, who's this fool? Uh, what can I get out of this person? And I'm not saying they're all this way, but what I will affirm is that enough of them are. And I know this from my own experience, uh, helping people in Pakistan, helping people in uh, Iraq, I remember one time we helped uh, some women uh, get to Spain from Iraq, and they were telling us about how they want to go to Germany and they don't want to be in Spain. And we're like, wait, you're in Europe. You're away from ISIS. What, what, what's the problem? And they're like, if you're not going to, this, this is what they told us. If you're not going to take us to Germany, then take us back to Iraq. Because as one Iraqi woman told us, I need to take my son back to the refugee camp so I can sign him up into the refugee school, the school for refugee kids. Like everyone's just lining up for this school in a refugee camp in Iraq as if it's freaking Magic Mountain. But anyway, uh, going back to what I was saying about Afghanistan, Afghanistan it, it really, it, and this really goes without saying, Afghanistan is a complete hellhole. It's one of the, it's one of the most hellish countries on earth. Uh, and, um, what is happening in Afghanistan is absolute hell. I mean, you see these videos of Afghans so desperately wanting to get out of Afghanistan that you see Afghans uh, clinging on to American planes. Well, there's this one particular video that I saw where these Afghans are clinging on to an American plane. And the plane takes off and these people fall to their deaths. It's really, really horrific. I'm not sure if this... I'm not sure if other incidences have happened like this, but I just saw this one video today and I thought it was, I mean, obviously it's very disturbing and that goes without saying, but America has put in so much money into Afghanistan, trillions of dollars to be exact, more than over $2 trillion um, have been spent by the U.S. government on Afghanistan. And that goes into military training, training um, the Afghans, trying to make the Afghan military um, trying to create an Afghan military, and also, of course, it, it, it went into um, actual U.S. military operations. Um, but also a ton of that money, billions of dollars of that money, um, went into funding Afghanistan's infrastructure. And it didn't really help anything. It uh, didn't really help anything at all. Um, Afghanistan, regardless of all this funding, Afghanistan has still been a hellhole. Um, Afghanistan is also still a major beacon for drugs. Uh, the biggest commodity in Afghanistan is not um, their amazing Afghan flatbread. It's it's opium. That's the biggest thing that they have to sell. It's opium. So it's a it's a major drug dealing com uh, company, uh, country. Uh, a country is kind of like a company. It's a major drug dealing uh, country, and the Taliban has been able to fund a lot of its operations with drug money. And they have managed to make many, 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 many people uh, dependent on opium, and that is uh, what the uh, that's what the Taliban has been standing on. Um, so much for being a, a, a pure Islamic people. There is uh, some quotes that I want to read to you guys here from some articles that I've been reading. It's pretty crazy. Uh, this is from Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera did an article about how much has America actually spent on Afghanistan and. What has it really gone into? And here is a, an excerpt from this article from Al Jazeera. It says here that since 2001, get this, this is crazy, crazy. Since 2001, the U.S. has appropriated more than 144 billion 
US dollars to Afghan reconstruction. So $144 billion, uh, more than that actually, has gone into Afghan reconstruction. This is how much the US has invested in Afghanistan's infrastructure. Much of that money went to private contractors and NGOs, the US government tasked with implementing programs and projects to build Afghanistan's security forces, improve governance, aid economic and social development, and combat illicit drugs. And even with, after all that spending and trying to combat the, the opium market in, uh, in Afghanistan, Afghanistan is still um, the producer of 80% of the world's opium. The most critical failure of those reconstruction efforts and the most expensive was the $88.3 billion spent training and equipping the Afghan army from May 2002 to March this year. And the United States has put in money into schools that it would not spend on school districts within the United States. So there has so the United States has put in more money in the education within particular areas of Afghanistan than it would within particular school districts in the United States. And still, it hasn't really helped. It's helped I mean, America has helped significantly in Afghanistan. I mean, the fact that as long as U.S. troops were there, there was some relative peace in the country. But now it's just much, much worse. And the fact is that the, the only thing that was really keeping Afghanistan together was the presence of the U.S. military. That was it. Even after all these billions of dollars were spent on creating and training um, Afghanistan's military, the only times where Afghan soldiers were actually successful in fighting Taliban insurgents was when U.S. troops were supporting them, was when you had uh, the presence of the U.S. military from the Air Force, U.S. soldiers, etc., that is not really positive. That's not a sign of a growing, thriving military. That is a sign of absolute decay and corruption. And speaking of corruption, billions of dollars, billions of those U.S. dollars that came from the U.S. government, which ultimately came from U.S. taxpayers, were wasted in fraud. Fraud. I, I'm talking about Afghan officials, people within the government, people within the U.S., people within the uh, Afghan military, stealing the money and people claiming, well, this money's going to go to this school. This money's going to go to this hospital. And those schools were never built. Those hospitals were never built. And the money went into people's pockets, the pockets of officials, Afghan officials. And around 15 or so billion USD uh, was lost, really robbed over around 15 billion USD was robbed by these corrupt Afghans. Uh, it really, it really goes to show you that, and this is, I, this is one thing that I think we can all take from this. The liberal fantasy of just fixing up a problem by throwing money at it is bull crap. It's garbage. And one, one of the things that really proves that it's garbage is Afghanistan. The fact that we have put in so many, so much money into Afghanistan, the fact that we have put in so much work to fix Afghanistan, um, the fact that we have put in so many, so many billions and billions of dollars into investing into Afghans, uh, Afghanistan's infrastructure, hospitals, banks, education, and nothing has happened. The fact that we have put in so much money to combat opium dealing in Afghanistan, and nothing has happened. It really does go to show you that th just throwing money at a problem doesn't fix the problem. And you have liberals in America who say things like, well, the reason why certain areas in America have so much crime is because of lack of education, lack of government funds. But we never take into account culture. We never take into account individual mentalities that are so... Uh, that are so ubiquitous, that are so ever-present, that they become the collective uh, disposition of these particular communities. Uh, and so people think, well, if we, can, you know, if, if we can just put in more money in this one area, we'll lower down crime. That doesn't work. If we could just put in more money into schools, then that'll lower down crime. That doesn't work either. But nobody wants to take into account 
the family, the importance of culture, and how culture plays a role in the success of a people. How culture plays a role, how the mentality of a people plays a role in their future and, and, and how successful they are and how, uh, and how they thrive, ultimately. Um, and you can have a neighborhood that has extremely high crime and people could say, well, if you just put more money, it'll fix it. But then you go to the school in this one particular area and you'll see violent students. You'll see students attacking teachers. You'll see students robbing the school. You'll see students destroying property. I remember when I was growing up in the Bay Area, uh, the public school that I was going to, and at this time I was in, I want to say seventh or eighth grade, the public school that I was going to thought it would be a great idea to have a, uh, a, a campus garden. Oh, the children will love it. And so they got together and they put these rock formations. They arranged these rocks to make it look like, uh, you know, the, these symmetrical, uh, symmetrical uh, rock formations. They're putting different rocks together, different bricks together to make it look nice and, and, and to make it look kind of artsy. And they put various plants and flowers together and planted it all together. And within a month, the whole thing was destroyed. And when I mean destroyed, I mean kids would come over and destroy it. Um, people, I remember, um, this one particular public school that I, that I went to, they had this big gym that they built for the school and kids would come over and spray graffiti on it because they thought it was cool. I remember when I was in high school in the Bay area, uh, kids would, these, this gang of kids, they went into the, the, this bathroom and they covered the entire walls with feces and who had to clean it up the poor janitor had to clean it up um this has nothing to do with public funding uh it has everything to do with morals with a lack of character as Jesse Lee peterson would rightfully say and really people without any sort of sense of integrity and accountability and also gratitude gratitude i believe Gratitude is a super powerful thing in human life. It's a super powerful thing because it's a universal currency. I've heard that gratitude is the greatest of all universal currencies, and I think that that's true. Um, if you show gra if, if if someone does something for you out of the goodness of their heart, and you show gratitude, that builds a bond between you and that person. Uh, it builds an incredible bond. But if you show a lack of gratitude or if you show indifference to that person's actions, then there's no bond. It is probably some hatred now that that, that, that person holds towards you or or that person looks at you with disdain. There's no community building. There's no, there's no connection at all. And the same thing goes for helping a nation. Um, the fact that all these Afghan soldiers just li laid their guns down after all these... After all this training, after all of the um, you know, billions and billions of dollars spent on creating this Afghan military and training them to fight the Taliban, the fact that these people just lay their arms down, put their weapons down, I mean, it, it just really goes to show you that the, and, and even the U.S. military knew this years ago. The U.S. military reported that if, we, if the U.S. military leaves, these people, these soldiers are not going to be able to fight. They're just not. You could say, well, they needed, they needed more training, they needed more whatever. And yeah, the, the U.S. probably could have done a lot more to make the Afghan military stronger. But the fact that after so much training, after so much money spent, they just put their arms down and run away. It's, 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 and I've read this somewhere, and, and I think it makes sense. I read that one of the biggest contributing factors to this, to this problem was that the U.S., did not really put in an institution that the Afghan people could be could would be willing to fight for, and maybe that is the case. Maybe that maybe these soldiers they didn't really have an ideal like they do in the United States. In America, the U.S. military has this ideal of America, and the U.S. military is actually, if you think about it, it's actually religious. It it, it functions no differently than a religious institution. You have um, this idea of America, which we cannot see. We can't see it, but it's some, It's an entity that we all believe in, in our in our conscience. So that's like God in a way. I mean, we don't see God, but we believe in Him. We don't see the idea of America, 
we don't see this thing called America, but it's this idea that we all believe in. And we have different interpretations of what this idea should be, just like people have different interpretations of who God is. And then you have, you know, your officials, your leaders, just like a church or any religious institution has its leaders. And then you have the concept of fighting for this idea. And every religion has the idea. I don't care if it's Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam. Every religion has the idea of fighting for its, of fighting for its beliefs. And, and, and by fighting, I don't mean just with words. I mean with weapons. And you fight for your country. You fight for this idea. And in America, this concept, this paradigm, this, this, um, this concept of looking at the idea of your country as you would a religion is so strongly embedded within the society that they are people in America who will t who not only will but they have taken bullets for the American flag for the idea of America. They will go out and fight for America because they truly believe in what this country stands for. You don't really have that in a lot of countries. And you don't have that. And maybe America should have worked harder to to instill that concept but still that would that would have been very difficult to do because you're talking about a people who are muslim sunni muslim the majority of whom are, are sunni muslim and you're talking about a people who may not like the united states they may not like it and and you're talking about a, a whole population of people who are muslim and america could have maybe Instilled, this, instilled the idea that they are fighting for the true Islam in, in these people to get them to fight. But maybe that would have been very difficult because of the fact that the Taliban uh, supposedly holds up this pure image of Islam. And maybe a lot of people in Afghanistan agree with that and they support that. And, and this idea of fighting for a democratic Afghanistan may not have been that strong in the collective conscience of the people. Um, but the, the reality is that um, the culture of Afghanistan is, is a decayed one. It really is a decayed one. It's a morally decayed one. And America probably could have done everything that it could have, and it would still be a failure because the society um, is completely decayed. You guys just heard some theology. God bless.